Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRayMaker.com and today I've got a complete deep dive into all the features that are still missing from the Mavic 3 that used to be there in the Mavic 2 and the Air 2S. Uh, so essentially the things that aren't quite baked yet. Now DJI was mostly pretty open about the fact that there are certain features like Active Track that aren't coming until January 2022. However, they were not so open about all these other features that are not here today. And there's about 20 to 25 of them uh, that are missing today from this drone that won't arrive until next year year, if at all. Okay, now first off, this video is definitely not sponsored at all. I bought this drone myself with my own money at a store nearby. It's running production firmware, all the kind of usual stuff there, uh, the most current production firmware. Two, I then spent a bunch of time, like many, many hours, uh, creating a list of all these features and then validating them on the actual drone itself as to what's there. Once that was done, I did three, take this list and sent it to DJI's uh, PR leads in North America and Europe, who in turn sent it to DJI's headquarters in China um, for their engineering teams, and they validated everything on my list and sent it back as one confirmed spreadsheet that what I'm about to show you is 100% confirmed through all the levels of DJI as Correct. So this is as validated as you can possibly get on a list of features that is and is not coming to the Mavic 3. Now, the way I've structured this video is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's like in four basic chunks. The first chunk is all of like the intelligent flight mode features. The second chunk is all the video features. The third chunk is all the photo features. And the fourth chunk is all the, like the miscellaneous things. And then on YouTube, you can use a scrolly thing on the bottom there uh, to find the right chapters for each one. Um, so first off in this main section around intelligent stuff, uh, which is APAS. That is here today. The APAS 5.0 is one of the very few features that is here today. In all my testing, it's really damn impressive. Like, you won't hear me say that unless something's actually impressive, and this is impressive. I've got a separate video that's coming up on that where I compare it to the Skydio 2 and its obstacle avoidance uh, detection, how well that works. Um, but spoiler, it's I haven't crashed yet. And if you've been on this channel, you know I'm happy to crash and kill drones uh, and dunk them in the water and all that kind of stuff to prove a point. And so, so far, so good. Uh, what is not there, though, is active track. Any form of active track, if you try to go and find it in menus, or if you simply try to highlight an object as you normally would to start active tracking, uh, that's not there. So it's not that there's not active track 5.0, it's there's not any version of active track in the Mavic 3 today. Uh, next, Master Shots. Uh, basically, Master Shots, what it does is you point at an object, you tell it to go and make a Master Shot video of that object, and it comes back about three minutes later with this beautiful highlight reel of that particular object. That's not there today. If you tap that feature, it just says, no, it's not there today. Uh, the same is true of POI. Uh, POI allows you to go ahead and take another object as well, uh, and then you can control the orbit around it. Uh, so it's gonna keep that in the frame while you go around that object. Uh, similarly, Spotlight Mode, uh, that takes a moving object and allows you to control your flight path around that object as opposed to active track which takes care of the tracking for you now for waypoints that's a often requested one dji says there are no plans for that in the mavic 3 so there's that uh hyperlapse is coming in january 22 it's not there today um all the quick shot modes droney circle helix rocket boomerang all the things that are in that 299 mini se are not there today. Now at this point, I can hear you saying already, no pros use any of those automated intelligent mode features. To which I say, that, that's BS, that, that's 100% not true. Uh, any pro worth their salt is using it when it saves their client time and money, or when it does it better than they can do it. Uh, just simply ask a pro. Uh, and if that wasn't true, then DJI wouldn't put those same features on the Inspire series, uh, and they're all on the Inspire series for that mid kind of tier of pro stuff. Uh, and the reasoning is, is simple. If you're a pro, if I'm hiring someone to go and take a bunch of b-roll of you know some object out there some building whatever the case is i don't want to have that person wasting their billable time trying to make the perfect orbit around this object i want them to point at the thing and know in 60 seconds later it's got a perfect orbit of that object inversely if i'm for hire somewhere I don't want to waste my time. I want to like have a higher bill rate so I can go ahead and just get that done in 60 seconds than trying to fiddle around and get the perfect shot of that orbit. And this is true of all these sort of uh, smart features. It's all about getting the job done quickly, uh, which is why pros use all these features. They may use them in different ways than you as a consumer do, but they're still using the same features. Now, the last feature in this smart category is a new return to home feature. That is actually here today. Uh, that's something that is here today. And equally, it is pretty impressive. Not perfect, but like it's really impressive. Uh, and again, I'll include that in my obstacle avoidance video, but I put this drone in some crazy places and watched it do some crazy new tracks to get back to me, as opposed to the usual scenario where it just goes straight up to your RTH value and then across and then back down again. Now it's, it's creative. I'm, I'm giving it props there. That's, that stuff is cool. 
So let's talk about video settings. And for video, I'm gonna convert over to this screen right now so I can just walk you through in person and show you all this stuff. Kind of go one by one. Uh, so D-Log, D-Log is here today. Uh, so you can go up there, you can choose up the top uh, D-Log and you see that's there, no problem at all. Um, however, once I go into the spotlight modes, so that's the secondary camera with the telecamera or the telephoto mode there. Uh, so at that point, I lose my D-Log option. So D-Log is not there on the secondary lens, secondary camera. Uh, and that's true for virtually any advanced feature on this drone. Uh, so all your advanced features are only applicable to the main camera lens. Uh, so you'll see equally, uh, there is no HDR or HLG mode. So back to the main camera lens for fun. Uh, you'll see that's missing in the menu there. Uh, that is coming in January, 2022, DJI says. 120 frames per second is actually here today. So if you go to slow-mo mode, uh, you can see that at 4K, um, Cine 4K or 1080p. What is not there though is 200 frames per second. That's listed on the spec sheet. Uh, that's not there today. Next, ProRes is there today on the Cine version and only on the main lens. Uh, I don't have the Cine version, so I can't show you that, but that's been well confirmed that it's there today, but just on the main lens, not on the secondary lens. 10-bit uh, video, that is here today, but again, only on the main lens. So 10-bit video occurs when you go to uh, D-Log, it's right there. Uh, but again, once I go back into spotlight mode using the secondary lens, at that point, I lose that particular option. Okay, so the next item here is probably gonna blow a few people's minds, uh, but none of the advanced settings for video or photo uh, work on the secondary lens. In particular, if you go ahead, you see the bottom right-hand corner, I can choose to go into pro mode, and that allows me to, for example, uh, lock the shutter speed. So you can see I can set it to whatever shutter priority. I can do that for aperture or for white balance, sorry, and aperture, uh, no problem at all. These are all set, or I can just go to audio and let auto and let it control it. Uh, and I can go back here to pro mode and just go back to auto for everything. However, that does not work on a secondary lens. When I go into telemoto there, explore mode, uh, then I lose the ability to do anything uh, on that lower right hand button, except change the exposure compensation, which I can do. You can see that's obviously increasing that right there, uh, but that is true across the board. So just, just keep that in mind. You don't have control of that on that secondary lens, which is arguably like one of the main reasons you'd buy this drone. Just, just throwing that out there. Um, so gimbal mode setting, that is in there for smoothing. I know some people were asking about that. Uh, so you can change the pitch and all that kind of stuff that's in there today. Uh, the histograms options, that's all down the bottom here. So you can choose all that across both lenses, no problem at all. Uh, and now with that, we are into photo mode. Uh, so. Switching over to photo mode, I just press this button right there, uh, and that switches to photo mode. You see it's keeping me in the telephoto uh, tele lens, the secondary lens, so I'm gonna get out of that for a second. Um, so burst mode, so the way if I go here, I can see my photo mode. So I'm now in photo, and I've got single uh, auto exposure bracketing or time shot, um, and that's it. There's no burst that DJI says is coming in January 2022. Raw photo mode support, that works on the main lens only. Uh, so you can see at the bottom there, right there, I've got JPEG plus raw um, or JPEG. Uh, but once I tap into the telephoto, I lose the raw mode uh, at that point. So just JPEG for the secondary lens. Now the next one is a little bit confusing. Uh, it is HDR support, uh, also called smart photo support in DJI lingo. Uh, and that one, isn't here. So if I go back out of this, I go over here. Normally there's a smart photo option there. And I asked DJI and they said that smart photo is built in in the same way that it's built in like on an iPhone where you just take a photo and it just does it automatically. Uh, and maybe that's true, but I can't control it anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, there's no setting to either disable that or enable that. I just wish it was on the menu. So I knew like this was a clean photo. This is an HDR photo. And the photos look fine, but I just want control of that. And if this is a pro camera at $5,000, 5,000 euros, 5,000 anything, I kind of expect that to have that level of control. Um, there are no panorama modes. You can see here, none of them are there. DJI says all four core panorama modes, uh, including wide angle, vertical, sphere, and 108 degrees are all coming in January, 2022. Uh, bracketing, as you can see right here, is available, uh, but only on the telephoto lens, sorry, only on the main lens. So if I go back, telephoto, I lose all photo options except just to take a single picture. Uh, and that's also the case of time shots. There's no time shots on the telephoto, but it is there on the main lens. So you can see right there, time shots, all the usual settings right there. Uh, so scrolling on down uh, for shutter priority mode, aperture priority mode, and all the configurations, those are all offered on the main lens, just like with video. Tap lower right hand button. You can see these right there. I can lock anything I want to. Uh, so I can lock aperture, I can lock uh, white bounce, I can lock shutter, I can lock ISO. And then the only thing available on a secondary lens, uh, I lose the 
pro mode uh, is to change the exposure. So I can go ahead and do that uh, up to whatever. Uh, and again, just in JPEG only for the secondary lens. Uh, and then like before, all of the uh, histogram stuff is all offered as well in this mode. You can see that histogram overexposure, grid lines, peaking, uh, white balance control, that's that's all there um, in that settings menu. Okay, so at this point we're down to like the generalized bucket of stuff. Uh, and so the 4G cellular dongle is coming in January 2022, but not in the US, the UK, or uh, the EU due to restrictions there on using the 4G space. Uh, so basically anywhere else except those countries, unless those countries have restrictions as well, uh, but they are very clear that it's definitely 100% not coming to uh, the US, UK, or EU because of the government restrictions there on that 4G access space. Uh, Wi-Fi quick transfer is not in the drone today. That is coming in uh, January. Uh, that is something that is sort of odd because the Air 2S already has that. Um, smart controller capability, compatibility. So this this controller here, nope, that's, that's not coming ever. Um, that's not in the plans today. And that's one that really irks my bubble uh, because there's no technical reason why not. Uh, so DJI talks about the new O3 Plus uh, transmission of the Mavic 3, and that's true. That's that's true if you have the RC remote, RC Pro remote uh, that comes with the Cine bundle, um, or if you buy it separately. Uh, but what's sort of left uh, off the table, not discussed, is the fact that this remote, the one that I'm using right now, that comes with the DJI Mavic 3 base, uh, is the RC 231 unit. This is the precise same remote that comes with the Air 2S and a few other drones over the last year because DJI has standard on this. So this works with this. This works with the Air 2S, the frequency there. Thus, this should work with this. There's no technical reason why this can't work with this. And I don't have a problem with DJI saying, hey, the smart controller may have slightly less signal quality than the new RC Pro. Fine, but uh, come on, it's it's just a toggle. It's using the same apps. It's an Android app that loaded on this. It's literally just a toggle for them to enable it on this particular controller, and they're not doing it so they can sell you the higher end one. To me, that's I'm hoping folks push back on that. And to be clear, I can understand if this drone didn't work uh, with the frequencies it supports, but it clearly does. Like there's no debate about that. So it's kind of kind of crappy they're not supporting uh, what is you know their high remote they've been selling uh, for a while now. The last two items in the list, uh, dual control mode. Uh, there is no plans for that either at this point. Uh, so that means that you cannot have two people controlling the drone, one for camera, one for uh, the aircraft itself, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, and then in a pro scenario, in a you know, know, pro drone operator scenario, dual control was very, very common. And at a $5,000 price point, uh, that's crazy. Given that the Mavic 2 supports it at what is effectively, you know, a third of that price um, and has supported. So um, again, everything I've talked about here today is supported on the Mavic 2 or the Air 2S, uh, and except for like the dongle, which is something that I just wanted to kind of cover. Uh, and then the last thing is AirSense. AirSense is there today. Uh, my unit works just fine with it. Uh, AirSense allows you to see aircraft that are around you. Uh, so even here in Europe where I'm based, uh, AirSense, no problems. I've been seeing aircraft showing up on this today. Uh, that's been, of course, on the Mavic Air 2S. Okay, with that, a complete look at what's actually in the Mavic 3 today in a very unsponsored sort of way. Uh, now, I've got this image right here on the screen. I've linked it down below in the description, so you just want to simply download the actual JPEG of that. A little bit easier to read and see. Uh, go ahead and do that. If you want to share it out, that's cool too. My only ask is simply just put a link to this video. Uh, that's what really helps out this video and the channel and helps me be able to make more content like this uh, so people can find that and I can spend my entire day in Excel spreadsheet trying to trying to figure it all out for all of you. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. Feel Feel free to go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom or subscribe for plenty more spoke technology goodness, including more Mavic 3 deep dive rabbit hole type stuff that I've been that I'm working on. As always, have a good one.